Hello everybody, this is Mr. Amin again. Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about understanding fast English. Here are your instructions for the entire lesson. I say a sentence three times. You need to listen to that sentence and write down exactly what you hear in the comments. After, I'll explain what I said and you can learn the pronunciation changes that take place in fast English and you can also learn the advanced English expressions that I use and the native speakers commonly use. So let's get started with the first listening exercise. I'll say it three times. We should have had a backup. We should have had a backup. We should have had a backup. I said we should have had a backup plan. Let's talk about the pronunciation. Notice I said we should have. We should have. We should have had. Native speakers, they combine this to sound like we should have. And notice that L is silent. We should have. We should have, okay. We should have had, we should have had a backup plan. Let's take a look at the link in between backup. This is how native speakers combine sounds. So two separate words will sound like one word, backup. So we take the sound from back the last sound and we transfer it to the next sound up back up but you have to combine those sounds together so it sounds like one word backup 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 plan backup plan we should have had a backup plan now what is a backup plan a backup plan is an alternative plan that you can use if your original plan fails. Let's say you're gonna present at a conference or a meeting, so you bring your computer and your presentation is on the computer, that's your original plan. That's plan A. But it's always smart to have a backup plan. This could be your backup plan, uh, you can put your presentation on a USB, uh, a memory stick. Uh, so if there is any issues with your computer, uh, you have a plan B, a backup plan. And then you can say, my computer wouldn't connect to the equipment, but thankfully I had my presentation on a USB. Thankfully I had a backup plan. Let's try this again, I'll say it three times. Her comment really pissed me off. Her comment really pissed me off. Her comment really pissed me off. I said, her comment really pissed me off. Let's look at the pronunciation of pissed. Because here, this is an ed, a past simple verb, but the sound of that ed is a very soft T. Pissed off. Pissed. 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 Now, when we say this in a sentence and there are words that come after, you almost don't hear that T, so you can't really distinguish that it's in the past simple. It's the context of the sentence that will make it obvious that it is the past. Her comment really pissed me off. Now, what does this mean to piss someone off? This means to make someone really angry. Now, note that this is an informal expression and it can also be considered impolite. It would be considered impolite if your name is uh, Mark, and I said, Mark, you're really pissing me off. That would be impolite. But native speakers commonly use this to complain about people. So, I could be talking to my wife or my 
best friend and say, Mark really pissed me off today. Mark really pissed me off today. In that context, it's not impolite, but it would be impolite to look directly at someone and say, you really piss me off. So don't do that. Now, we also use this in the structure to be pissed off. The pronunciation is the same. Pissed off. To be pissed off, this is simply to be really angry. For example, I was so pissed off when I came home to a completely dirty house, even though my kids promised to clean up after the party. Do you want to do another listening exercise? I say it three times. Take what she says with a grain of salt. Take what she says with a grain of salt. Take what she says with a grain of salt. I said, take what she says with a grain of salt. Here, the pronunciation is clear, but if you don't know what this idiom means, then you won't understand it. So, the idiom is to take something with a grain of salt. We use this to say that you shouldn't believe everything someone tells you because it might not be true. So, let's say your friend tells you that, Oh, Gina says she'll help me move this weekend. But from your experience, Gina likes to make a lot of promises. But, but she doesn't always follow up with those promises. She doesn't always fulfill those promises. Then you might say, take what she said with a grain of salt. You're letting your friend know that Gina might not actually do what she says. And let's focus on the grammar here. What do you notice about this sentence? Take what she says with a grain of salt. What verb tense is this in? We're using the imperative. Take uh, is the imperative uh, because uh, the sentence begins with a base verb. There's no subject here. Uh, that's how you can, you can identify the imperative and the imperative is, is used to give instructions, orders, or suggestions. Uh, so I'm suggesting that my friend take what she says with a grain of salt. Your next listening exercise, I'll say three times again, is high time we'll let it go. It's high time we'll let it go. It's high time we'll let it go. I said... It's high time we let her go. For pronunciation, let's talk about let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Here, notice how her uh, sounds uh, uh, like er. You don't hear uh, the H letter, letter. Okay? You don't hear the H. But I also attach it to the word before, so I link those sounds together. Letter, letter, let it go. Let, letter, 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 let it go, let it go. Uh, it's high time we let it go. Let's look at the expression, it's high time. When you say it's high time, that something should happen. You're saying that something should happen now and not later. And when you use this expression, you also suggest that it should have already happened. So we should have, okay? We should have already let it go, but we didn't. So we should do it now because it's high time we let it go. Coming back to our example, it's high time we let it go. Uh, to let someone go, this is uh, an alternative way of saying to fire someone. When you fire someone, they permanently stop working uh, 
sorry, for the company. So when you let someone go, they permanently stop working for the company. It's high time we let it go. Remember, you suggesting you should have let it go a while ago. So now you better do it. Let's do one last listening exercise. I say three times again. He looked a little frazzled. 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 I said he looked a little frazzled. Let's talk about pronunciation. A little, a little. Native speakers they don't pronounce T's between two vowels. It will be either a very soft D, d, d little, 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 or you just won't hear it. Little, 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 a little. Okay. And notice the a uh, is connected to it. A little, a little, a little. He looked a little frazzled. Uh, he looked a little frazzled. Looked. Um, uh, it's a past simple, easy verb, but the pronunciation is a very soft t. Looked, and frazzled. Uh, it's a past simple easy verb too, but the pronunciation is a very soft D. Frazzled, frazzled, and you almost don't hear it. Frazzled, very soft D. Uh, to be frazzled or to look frazzled, this is when you are or look very tired, but you also uh, look very worried and anxious. So you might see it visibly in my appearance, and you can see, and you can see it in my facial expressions as well. So if you see a coworker that looks frazzled, uh, you might say, "Are you okay? You look a little frazzled." Uh, okay, amazing job improving your listening skills of fast English. And so now let's improve your pronunciation. Let's do. An imitation exercise. I'm gonna say each sentence again, but I'm gonna pause, and then I want you to repeat the sentence out loud and try to follow my pronunciation exactly. So try to imitate my pronunciation, and I will say each sentence three times. So I want you to repeat it out loud three times. We should have had a backup. We should have had a backup plan. 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 Okay, perfect. So, uh, her comment really pissed me off. Her comment really pissed me off. Her comment really pissed me off. Amazing job. Take what she says with a grain of salt. Take what she says with a grain of salt. Take what she says with a grain of salt. Marvelous job. It's high time we let it go. It's high time we let it go. It's high time we let it go. Excellent. He looked a little frazzled. He looked a little frazzled. Majestic. And finally, I hope you enjoyed this listening exercise. And it was Mr. Amin with you all again, who was responsible for ensuring that you learn English skills, including listening, reading, writing, and speaking. So wait for more. Who brings out the best in you? Until next time, keep dancing. Peep peep.